Hey guys, welcome to Currently Cringing. We have a friend of the show. I want to say like you're the a family member of the show. Welcome back, Aditya. Hey, it's nice to be back. It's been a while. People were wondering where you were. People were DMing me where you were. And then people are also writing reviews about how they don't like you on the pod, which I find quite disrespectful. And I think these are people that are in your inner circle of exes. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I'm happy to go away, but it's like you're going to have haters and lovers, right? People who support you. And I don't know. I just, I just feel like I'm sharing my life and it's a different perspective. And I'm not trying to like offend anyone, you know? As someone who's been in the trenches and has a lot of haters, and there's a ton of comments about me as well in the pod reviews, if you don't have haters, then you're doing it wrong. Also, like, we give tough love. It's like, you, we say the things that you don't want to hear. And it's like, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not, you know? Absolutely. And speaking of tough love, mm -hmm. you're single again. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's okay, actually. It's like, every breakup is, like, kind of uh, better than the previous one, I think. And... You know, same person I was dating in the fall and we like got back together. And then like, you know, we finally, I think like, you know, after like five, six months of dating, you know where you stand. And I think we knew like deep down, like it wasn't a long term thing, but we're still friends. We're still on really good terms. And I'll text her every now and then just, you know, like, you know, see something in the news that she might like. And, you know, I'm sure we'll be friends down the line. And I hope she finds someone that's more compatible in her life. Um and I think that's all you can say with your exes. I actually think this is a, a topic that, you know, wasn't on our list. But I think, like, having healthy relationships with exes were, like, you know, you don't have to be best friends. But, like, good memories and good things to say about each other is actually very important for growing as a person. Do you agree? Agree a thousand percent. And I think it's a red flag when someone bashes their ex. Unless they beat them or cheated on them. You know, there's extreme... Yeah. But oh, I mean, you you stole the words out of my mouth. I mean, we talk about this all the time in our group chat where it's like, if you're the person who just, you know, every ex of yours is terrible, that's on you. Look in the mirror, hun. Agree. Like, completely. Not every person you're dating, I think, is a narcissist or a gaslighter or all these what, what, what we call therapy. These are trending terms. words that people are now getting from therapy. And we had Sira Chavala, who's a therapist from the UK on the pod many moons ago and she said that as millennials and gen z we're now using therapy kind of as a weapon but in Ooh. the wrong way so people who are going to therapy in her case who are going to her practice are like rape victims people going through you know war genocide you know like real life shit people with real mental illnesses mental disorders and now as millennials you know, someone doesn't text us back in time and we need to call the therapist. And all of a sudden we're using words like gaslighter and narcissist and trauma bond. And these are all like <laughs> buzzwords in millennial cult culture. What is it? Avoidant attachment. Like we need to stop. Oh. I mean, I will say that my last ex did have a an avoidant attachment and I was anxious and like, yeah, but I just feel like if two people really like each other, you make it work. And it's like, again, I'm not bashing my ex. I'm just th I'm just thinking that, like, you know, I don't think the two of us work together hard enough to make it happen. But also maybe we weren't compatible. And that's important, right? But again, I have zero hard feelings for her. If she told me right now that she was dating someone, I'd be so happy for her. And I'd be like, like, I literally hope you guys get married. And I And we wrote each other the nicest notes that I shared with you, like, over text, like, long, long notes. And not like, you know, the crazy notes, which is kind of like, thank you for the time we spent together. I learned so much about myself. Like, you know, it was like very therapeutic. And she wrote me an equally long thing back being like, you taught me what it is to be in a relationship and you taught me what it's like to be treated well. And these are the things I'm going to look for in a partner, you know? So I think you learn, obviously, from my relationship, but also it's kind of like, I feel good after a good relationship where we can be on good terms. And like, you know, if we joke about it, like... I. At this point, I kind of miss the dog more than I miss her. <laughs> yeah, she had a dog. And you said you would never date a girl with a dog again. And here you are. You were like a dog walker for months. And you <laughs> loved it. Oh, uh, we really got along. And like, you know, 
I get along with many dogs, but you know, the two of us spent a lot of time together and we'd go for our, our little morning walks together and pick up coffee and bagels. And, you know, a lot of times like he would just, he actually used to ignore her and like sleep with me. Well, I think, bed. I think you're an amazing human, an amazing person. And uh, the, I, I think you're a huge asset to the podcast. So I'm grateful you come on I'm thankful you took the time for me today because I know you're really busy the listeners Mm. don't know you've been in three continents doing big things you're busy oh my god yeah I have work all over I've been uh on the west coast I I always go to Vegas but I was in Vegas I was in the south for some work and then I went to the UK to Scotland to look at some real estate and I'm going to India next week so I'm just all over the place um I've not really spent that much time in New York, but so it's actually nice. Like, it's like, it's weird to say like after having a breakup, but like, I've just been all over. I've been seeing friends. I've been working. I've been traveling family. My sister had a baby. So I've been with my nephew whenever I can. And you know, I, I shared this text with you. There was some girl I went out with like a while ago on Hinge who like reached back out to me being like, Hey, like, I know that we didn't really connect, you know, on this date, but like, maybe we could hang out as friends. And I was just like, yeah, like, sorry, like, I'm really busy. Like, I have, I have work, I have family, I have friends, I have weddings, I have obligations. Like, what am I, what am I getting out of this, you know? We're busy and book ton. And unless you're providing ROI, ain't nobody got time. And we have a word for this type of person, a boomerang. (laughs) But this isn't even like a, like a boomerang is like someone that I have dated. But it's like a boomerang who wants to be a friend. It's like, I got enough friends. We don't have time for, yeah. for friends. We've got enough friends. We're good. I'll, you know what? I'll be your friend if you make me money. Like, you bring me a business deal or you bring me a girl to date, then I'm down. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, we've established our long-term friendships. And if you're new to the party or new to the table, it's like, okay, what are you bringing to the table? And it's a two-way street, right? Like, we both have to offer each other some value. But we don't have time for people that just want to randomly text out of nowhere and then be friends like ain't nobody got time but i i I just i know that for me by age 30 i wanted to keep like 90 something like 90 something percent of my friendships i wanted to have around then and then like you know you were one of the people that came in after 30 and hot friend sheets whatever so like yes i made and then i think after 35 i'm just kind of like i'm down to meet people but it's like you better be giving me something and i think the same should be for those people like why should i you know, we've we've all got long term friendships and we have like family and stuff. And, you know, especially, you know, if, you know, anytime I start dating someone, then you want to invest time in that person's friends and their family and you want to have them meet your friends, you know? Absolutely. So no one has time. We're not like 22 where it's like, oh, I met someone off hinge and they want to be friends. Like, okay, you got time, hon. Do, do it. Exactly. And I'm actually really proud of you because breakups are hard. But this is the first time I'm seeing you just spring back. There was very little, you know, moping and Mm -hmm. woe is me. And you really just blew us all away. And we're very proud of you. The comeback is stronger than the setback. Mm -hmm. And I want the listeners to also know, like, you just had a breakup and you put yourself into your work and you're making moves. You're doing big things behind the scenes. and the game is to to go back out there, right? That's how you meet someone. And people, I, mean, that I, I, I am going. I have too. been going on. I have been going on dates. But the other thing that I change is I don't want to go on the dating app scene. I will meet people through people or in the wild. And so I've had some pretty good dates with people. Um, you know, those haven't worked out, but like that's okay. And I just am not interested in swiping. My my mental health is so good right now. And I was talking to a bunch of people about this, like. I'd rather be single and by myself and like going on like one date a month via friends or meeting someone at a bar um, than going on three to five dates a week off hinge. I don't want to do that anymore. And the same cesspool of people. Yeah. And also it's like we've been doing this for a decade now and it's like, it's just bad for your brain. And these apps are like, they don't want you off the apps. They want you to stay. They want you to spend on premium. They never want you to leave. Um, There was like an article saying that it's basically the same the same addiction at like a casino, right? Like we're like, you can win a casino game, but then you're, you know, you should leave, right? You win a, you win a slot game, you win blackjack, whatever, but it's the addiction that actually makes you want to stay and get more. And then eventually the house always wins. 
So this is the exact same thing with dating and dating apps. Like Hinge and Bumble, you could find the best girl, the best guy, but they'll they'll do these little things where it's like, hey, we're gonna give you five free matches, and here's like this shiny person. And meanwhile, they're dating five other people too. And so you never get off the apps. And yeah. I think it's a it's a problem. And I think it's different. When we were in our 20s and like pre-COVID, I think uh, you know, a lot of our friends found their partners, including you, on the dating apps. And I think like those the apps were built a little differently, where it was like friends of friends and like you know, they wanted you to find someone. I think now they are not interested in you leaving the apps. Yeah. And I also think there was a lawsuit. Someone files a lawsuit regarding oh, these. Wow. And I think they're about to win. They filed a lawsuit against Tinder. And I agree. I think it is an addiction. And it's the same way they want you to keep scrolling on Reels and TikTok. It's mm-hmm. a whole, you know, they're they're playing with your brain here. But um, it's, a, it's a real life casino. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm a casino of people. <laughs> but I want to say that also people forget very quickly. So people may not realize I'm three years older than you. So I was going through this when we were first meeting, right? And, you know, the constant like letdown and then starting over. But the key is to keep starting over. You have to just start over. You got to move on, move forward. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty good at starting over, but I'm so focused on my work stuff right now. And you and me and NKP, we're all very focused on work right now. Yeah, work is priority. I'm more focused than ever for people that have asked me, you know, have you spoken to your friends or your cast? Like, it's not just the cast. It's no one. I've spoken to no one. I'm literally that focused right now that there's no time. for You anything. you told us that you're doing something, but you won't tell us what it is. Yeah. And that's the closest we're going to get, which is fine. I'll I'll tell you guys when it's done. Exactly. It's and that's how we're like all with, moving. It's like with dating. Like one day I'll be like, hey, I'm engaged. <laughs> You <laughs> like me, and that's exactly what I did because at some point, you know, the nuzzer is real, the evil eye, and just move in silence. Don't yeah. tell people things until they are done, until they're confirmed. And so now, even Neil and you, both of you are moving in silence. And hey, we've said it before private till permanent. I think the, the themes of 2024 so far have been move in silence um kind of like cut people out that are doing nothing for you and then it's the year of the receipts (laughs) for sure group chat receipts (laughs) group chat receipts people are leaving group chats it's like okay you know it is what it is and i've had four different people leave four different group chats (laughs) i don't know if it's the eclipse mercury retrograde starts april 1st oh Oh, god (laughs) But we actually came on today not to talk about any of this. Me and you were having a debate yesterday. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the twins or number two first? Let's start with the twins. Okay. So as many of you know, the twins, Abby and Brittany, apparently they have a TLC show. They're conjoined twins. And they married. Well, Abby got married. One of them got married, Abby. And they have two brains, three hearts two lungs but they share one pelvis i think what you're trying to say is one vagina we got one of them's boning i don't know who feels what but they just got married you may have seen this on social media abby got married and me and you were debating because i'm gonna get a lot of shit for this but if i was the other twin Brittany, i think it's really selfish i would slit both our throats i'd kill us both (laughs) You you sent us a video on TikTok of the first dance, and <laughs> he's just so looking like, at Abby. He's not. So he's looking at Abby, Brittany. and he's like dancing with both, and he's kissing her. But <laughs> I think I was talking in the group chat, and a hot friend Julio agreed with us, or hot neighbor Julio, and we were talking, and I was like, I was really expecting him to turn over to like look over and kiss the other one too. <laughs> and I agree. Everyone deserves to have a chance at love. Everyone deserves to explore or try marriage if they want. But in this case, what's happening? Like, what's happening to Brittany? And what if Brittany finds someone to marry? Then right. what? So first of all, does she never get anything? Or is she asexual? And she just, like, doesn't want any part of it? She's like, I'm giving up on love so you can have it. But then also, like, when they're boning, like, 
how does that work? Does the other one sleep? Do they close their eyes? I, I, I don't know. And does she feel an orgasm? Probably not. And I think we talked about this. I think BJs are just completely off the table because like that's just too... I don't think up. they're off the table. I think they're doing... And, and how could you live like this? I mean, I think it's selfish. I think it's selfish. And I, I don't know if it's selfish. If everyone's consenting, if all three people are consenting to whatever you want to call that, the he, him and they, them, whatever you want, whatever pronouns you want to use, that was your job. They're probably a real them. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry if I stole your joke, but I had to put that was in a group chat. I actually, I giggled when I saw that. <laughs> They're a them. They're probably the only ones who deserve to be called a them at this point in time. And first of all, what what is he thinking? You know, you got. Oh, I have so many questions. The other question—that's right. I was saying first, how did they meet? That's the first thing. Like, was it like a church? Was it at a bar? Was it like a bet that like one of his friends was like, yo, like go up to the conjoined twins or was it like an introduction like like could you like like hey i know this girl and this other girl do you want to have the wildest threesome of your life or was it like hey have you ever done this and then all of a sudden he fell in love with one of them like, i i don't know how this even started that's my biggest question so the twins are teachers they're fifth grade teachers they live in minnesota and josh the husband his Facebook account reads Christian father, husband, veteran. And there's pictures Wait, of all so of them. So he's a father already. I guess so. Yeah. The divorce. Yeah. So now his child is a child of divorce, which is already tough enough. And now his father is remarrying the conjoined twins. That kid's going to need therapy. Sorry. I'm just going to say it. They, well, they share a bloodstream and all organs below the waist. Abby controls the right arm and leg while Brittany controls the left. So we're talking about a hand job from one side, but not the other. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. I just, You're just I, thinking I, BJ thinking. and hand job. <laughs> well, it seems like that's a little more consensual than full on boning. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I. I and and I don't think this is like a laughing matter, but you gotta wonder what is the guy thinking. My other question that I said is, what does this guy's like friends and family think? You know, like like we are all snickering in the group chat. You don't think this guy has like a bunch of friends that are making all these jokes as well? And I want to clarify, we are not snickering about the disability or any. Oh of no, we're no no no. We're talking. Because... We're actually making more fun of the dude. So like dude, the girls are actually like no issue at all. We don't make fun of disability people, but it's more about the dude and his proclivities. Like, like he's what got, is he like, thinking? Like what is his fetish? You know, he's a nurse and a U.S. Army veteran. Right, and I'm I'm just more kind of like the logi like what are the logistics? Like there's the first question someone on group chat said, "How does the sex work?" And by the way, everyone is thinking that. Everyone, we're just saying what everyone's thinking. Like, sorry, like, cancel us again. <laughs> and I guess what if Brittany wants to fall in love with someone and find someone, then what? That's the next great question, right? So, like, if she finds someone, is this guy going to be okay, like, sharing the twins? Like, do they have, like, a really wild four-way? Like, I don't understand how it works. I think it's selfish. They should, it's like, it's like, is there like a conjoined twins dating app where like, it's like you have conjoined male twins and female twins and they could date each other. Or I'd understand once in a while you want a bone, but getting married and having an entire life with someone and it's just one of you, that's a little much. But maybe the other one is also gets along with him, right? Like maybe it's like, oh, like I'm really fond of this person too. And it's basically... It's kind of like a thruple slash poly, and the sex is like a. No, you don't think they're don't friends think it's at thruple. least. Okay, I think they're friends because they're they're going on vacation together. They're doing everything together, but I don't think it's a thruple. Right. Well, you're thinking of the sexual part because remember the thruple could also be like a platonic like. There's a platonic part of a thruple too, where they're like three people that like do coupley things together that don't involve sex. You know. 
Yeah. And also, by the way, they got married in 2021. We're just hearing about it now on social media. They were they've been married for two years. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I thought this just happened. No, we're just seeing it now. Wow. I'm shook again for the 12th time this year. Yeah, it's a year of getting shook. Everything's like shaking us. <laughs> well, I think can't find how they met. I'm trying to find how did they meet. I can't find it anywhere. I'm going to guess it's something church or Christian related. That has to be the only way. Yeah. So. And he has an eight-year-old daughter. And Abby is the stepmom. And what's the other one? The other one's just hanging out, hon. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I would be livid. I'm just confused. This whole situation is confusing to me, but, you know, I'm just a boring guy that dates one person at a time. Same. We're just boring people. And, you know, I'm happy for them. I do think everyone deserves a chance at love, but I think it's got to suck for the other twin, you know? I'm sure there's an agreement. I'm sure they've discussed it. but. Anyways, shall we move on to our yeah, next yeah. topic? Our next and final topic. And this came up because we were just talking about it in the group chat. We have some people that are dating new people. And when do you start number twoing with your partner well, around? Like, when do you start doing that? I mean, do you leave? Like, when is it okay to be like, I'm going to the bathroom? So what I've done is when I'm dating people and like I have girls in my building and they come over, I will obviously strategically try to do it like before they come over. Um, there is a period of time where I would just, I think at the beginning, I'll leave, like let's say I have to really go in the middle of the night, say, or in the morning, I'll leave my apartment and I'll go to the lounge in my building for a poo there or like on the roof. Sorry, Which not think... like literally on the roof, like the bathroom on the roof. <laughs> the roof. No, but like, I think that's so thoughtful of you. And have you had someone do it in your house and like you knew like it was the poo, like they pooed in I your I have house. absolutely no idea. I feel like if it's happened, I just didn't know about it. Yeah. So for me, I, I mean, you got to go, you got to go. And some of us, like, I can't hold my poo and I don't recommend holding your poo. It's not good for you. But someone like me, like I go in the morning, like clockwork, like that's when I go. And so it's pretty easy because I go and then I shower. But what do you do if you got to go in the middle of the day? When When is the appropriate time? And I'm going to say the appropriate time is any time. Just have matches with you. And my view was that actually, this is a gift from an ex-girlfriend, was poopery that, um, like, it's the thing where you spray the toilet before you go, and it makes everything smell better afterwards. So... In my experience, Poopery, I know it's like a billion dollar company. God bless the woman who invented <laughs> it. It just smells like shit and fragrance scent. Like it's not pleasant. It's just like now it smells like a public bathroom. But right. a match, a match lights up the entire place and the smell is completely gone. And I learned the match trick from my younger days. You know, that's just Maybe it's a Miami thing. That's what we did. And then when I was in New York at Tahari, all women working there, we had like a nine stall public public bathroom that we all used. And even there, people would light matches. So it's just a thing. I've always had matches with me in my purse. I travel with matches and I even keep matches for guests in my bathrooms, my guest bathrooms here, even though we have an exhaust because the exhaust is not enough. You need a match. I've never done this before. I feel like I... Dude, if I had a match, I would set my bathroom on fire. You know this. You know me. You've I seen know, my place. Probably. Well, I think a match is helpful, but I think it's okay to go at any point in time. I don't think you should be holding your poo. And sometimes you got to go. Then you go. But it should not. I feel, and then the, the next thing to think about is we know, and this is your thing, is you always want to go on a trip to like understand compatibility with someone. So like, you know, with my last ex, like candidly, like the first time we went on a trip, we we vibed sort of as friends, but like it didn't feel like anything more. And then we kind of broke up and then we got back together and then we went on another trip and that trip didn't go so well. And then again, like this is all amicable, but I do remember thinking of the whole bathroom situation. Um, 
And on one of the trips, I literally never pooped in the room. I went to the business center to poop every single time. Ideally, pro tip per dit, leave the room and shit somewhere else. Especially in a, in a nice hotel, like there's a business center bathroom, there's a gym bathroom, there's like a like swimming pool, shower, locker room or whatever. There's so many like other bathrooms, like you don't need to use the bathroom in your, you know, unless, wait, there's, there's one exception. If you know they're making the room up, then you can poop, right? And, like as yeah. soon as you see the cleaning people outside, you'd be like, hey, like go downstairs, like grab a table, I'll be down in a minute. And then you go and then you tell the cleaner, like, hey, like and the room needs to be done up. But otherwise, business better. <laughs> yeah, leave the room, go somewhere else. But it's a real topic of discussion. And I talk about this even in my comedy show. I've been married a year. We are not looking at each other or talking to each other during those times. We are we have separate bathrooms. And I don't know how people like poop and like leave the door open and talk to people. Like I can't. Even with my husband. Yeah. Hell no. I didn't do that growing up either with my siblings. One day, one day you might get there. I don't know. I get grossed out, so I don't think I can. But <laughs> but when do you think is appropriate? Like just you're like, just go if you gotta go, but maybe not in the room or wherever you're staying. Yeah, I think it's maybe also like that comes out the whole like when do you fart in front of your partner? Like I know that's another thing. And that could happen anywhere from three to six months, I think. I don't fart in front of my partner. <laughs> I guess everyone's also boys are a little different, right? It's like with boys, like there's always also sometimes it happens by accident, right? <laughs> yeah. It has happened by accident for me. But luckily, those accident ones aren't the smelly ones. It's just air. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, That's but, but I think I think farting's not really a big deal. Like it is like, you know, at, at some point, I think it breaks the ice, if anything. But yeah, you can laugh about it. But number two is like, keep that to yourself. And yeah. my my pro tip is run around with matches. And your pro tip is go to the business center, use another bathroom in wherever you're at. I guess what's tough is if you're in suburbia, but I guess if you're in, if you're like not in a building, usually those places will have two bathrooms, right? Like if you're not in like a New York City apartment, right? Which usually has just one bathroom. But if you have the, if, if you have a place with two, which is, usually, which is usually like a house, then, you know, just use the other one. Yeah. Well, that's our Or point. like, I don't, I don't know, find your local Starbucks. I don't know if people still do that. <laughs> I know people like sometimes you have diarrhea, you know, and it sucks, but then you have to go. But so, so that's why I'm saying more than anything, it's like, just make sure it doesn't smell. Like if you're a dude, just like find the nearest bar or pub to your apartment that's like has like a semi clean bathroom. <laughs> Wait, you would like vacate the apartment? Yeah, I would. If, uh, if I had no other options, <laughs> I would leave it. Huh? Like, let's say it's like two in the morning and like. There's a girl in my apartment, and I, I like I live in the in Midtown Manhattan. Just like go to a bar nearby that's open, <laughs> just like 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 pay for a drink. <laughs> this is like insane as I'm saying it, and then just go poop there, and then don't even have the drink and leave. So, what would you tell girls when you would go to the bathroom in your lounge area in your apartment building? Like, hey, I'm gonna be back. Well, they're they're sleeping, so you pretend to go to your actual bathroom and then you leave, but also they're asleep. Okay. And you're just, uh, you know, but if it's like in the middle of the day, if you really got to go, you're like, hey, I'm going to go pick up some mail. And yeah. so I'll go down and pick up the mail, but also go to the lounge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel disgusting even now if I have to go, like, let's say it's Saturday or Sunday and my husband's home, obviously. And then I have to go. And it's like, we all know what you did in there. You know, it's like, not a, it's not, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. And I'm still embarrassed. Also, like at the beginning stages of dating, you're like, so you're always in your best behavior, right? You want to make sure like, you know, you're dressing well, you're smelling well, you're putting on like, for me, it's like I'm putting on deodorant and cologne and mouthwash and brushing my teeth and I have gum. It's like all, you know, in the group chat, Neil will be like, do you have gum? I'm like, bitch, I got everything. Yes. And I, <laughs> I got mint and gum. I want to say those things should continue. That's what keeps marriage exciting. That's what keeps it fun. You have to always maintain yourself. Never let yourself go 
for your spouse. Like, you know, that's, you know, you're, you're honoring them. You're showing them that you care by taking care of yourself. Yeah, I agree. But it's also levels, right? It's like the beginning, you're going to do, you're going to do the most, you're going to put on your best clothes. Whereas like you can start rerunning clothes, you know, you can, you know, maybe yeah, like wear, right now, maybe wear a hoodie, you know, versus like at the beginning, you're dropping, you're putting blazers on, you know? Yeah. Like I'm at home right now in sweats because I'm not leaving the house today. I don't have any makeup on and you know, I'm home and my husband's going to see me like this. Whereas when we first started dating, you know, I'd wear the dresses and, you know, wave my hair and do all of that. Yeah. But I think that was a fun topic and we wanted to give it to you live. So you're getting a bonus two episodes this week. <laughs> And oh, also, and, and before we go, remember, I there was before this call, we want to talk about why boys are obsessed with a certain person. Oh, yeah. We want to talk about this because I didn't understand. Thanks for reminding me. You, before we got on the Zoom, you were talking about Sydney Sweeney. I don't get the hype. I don't get it. I don't get how you don't get the hype. I get that she's voluptuous and she's mm -hmm. sexy and she has a nice body. But I, I don't think she's some beautiful, stunning girl. Like, I don't. It's not about beauty. It's about sex appeal. I think it's, she's got, like, a Kate Upton vibe. Like, Kate Upton circa 2012. I'd say she's, like, the... Every, like, generation, I think, needs that sexy, voluptuous, and maybe blonde, maybe not blonde girl that's kind of, you know, popping off the page. And I think Gen Z's version is Sydney Sweeney. And I think you're right about that for sure. But I think my view might be a little pessimistic because as a brown girl, it's like, oh, of course, it's the quintessential busty blonde. But also she's she doesn't have that. It, it's almost like a girl next door look, I think, to the point she where does like not look like the girl next door. She it's like she you're, you're delusional to be like, oh, I could have dated a girl like this in high school if i was a lot cooler i don't know reese witherspoon looked like the girl next door in her prime i feel yeah that's true ashley tisdale looks like the girl next door i think <laughs> i think sydney sweeney is sexy but again i feel bad even commenting because we're talking about women now and their looks and all of that and that gets you canceled but i guess we're just having a real conversation that we just had on the phone and we're okay with that. I just don't get the hype is what I want to say. I think all women are beautiful. I don't get why everyone's going nuts over her, including you. <laughs> I think you've dated like hotter people. Wow. That is quite the compliment. <laughs> um, well, it's not just about looks, as you know. And there, there you are tying it up with a nice bow so i appreciate it i think looks get you in the door both ways and there's a threshold but the other things that matter i always say like are you a kind person are you funny are you interesting intelligent uh and do you want the same things in life as me and on this on a similar timeline and also same values you know morals and values for sure and those were all qualities that we've discussed that were important to me and my husband as well at the end of the day. That's what matters. And like, can you do shared activities? Like you guys have your whole pizza thing, you know? Yes. And everything. We do everything together when he's around. Right. Which is never. <laughs> which is never, which is why it works. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for coming on. I know you're busy. You've got a big weekend planned. Any Fun Easter activities, Easter brunch, famous Easter brunch. I'm visiting some friends um, in Atlanta, and um, I have friends I'm seeing in LA at some point, Vegas. I got more, my work there, and then I'm going to India to see my family. Um, didn't see them for Holy, which was this week, but you know I'll catch up with them next week. I've been so focused, as you know, I did not realize it was Holy till my dad wished me Happy Holy, and I felt really bad. And then mm -hmm. I did not realize it was Easter weekend till no one was answering the phone today. And you were like, it's Good Friday. Somehow <laughs> I'm the only person that took today off. I don't understand. And me, 1099 life, every day is the same. So I didn't know today was Good Friday, but, but everyone's a lot of 
a lot of W2 big companies don't have to lay off, whereas like our company is a little bit smaller. We happen to follow the New York Stock Exchange and they take Good Friday off. So we did that too. Yeah, I was surprised Neil, who was at Meta, they're working today. So, you know, yeah, who knows? But to everyone, thank you. And thank you, Aditya, for coming on. And I hope you have a lovely weekend. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye.